Who's up first here, Jimmy? Yeah, how about, uh, you know, I know it's got the heat down there. How much are you pushing maybe hydration uh, throughout the week I mean, leading up to this one? What are you going to do? Drink pickle juice, drink Gatorade. I don't, you know what I mean? It was, it was warm a little bit the other day for us, and it's what the conditions will be. So, again, we'll have to go down there and play with the conditions and, you know, rotate some guys if we need to rotate some guys, uh, you know, where, wherever we see fit. How has Will been this week just as far as leading the offense and you know, taking all the reps? Same exact way he's been the last two weeks. And he's led the offense and taken all the reps. And then when you've had Tannehill on the field with him, how has that interaction been? Same way that it's been uh, in the meeting room. And you know, really nothing's uh, changed from that regard. It's just, you know. Ryan's in a different role right now. You know who number two is now, or is, it, is, that, is that a game-time decision? Uh, that'll probably be a game-time decision here, seeing where where Ryan continues to, you know, where his health will be. He'll be uh, listed as questionable. He can take all the reps this week. How's Mike Brown done in his, uh, since being activated into his uh, return with it? Uh, good. I mean, he's ready to go. It's just... You know, working through different spots in the roster, but Mike's attitude's been great. Um, you know, getting getting back into it with the show team and some reps, and you know, being ready to go. Um, you know, so hopefully we'll we'll know more here uh, next week. Did, uh, did Chris clear the protocol? He did. How what has allowed him to play so well when he's maybe been in there and kind of fit into what you what you preach here? Oh, uh, you mean Chris? Chris Hubbard, Hubbard uh huh. I just think that there's a professionalism. I think he's gotten into uh, better shape, you know, physically than where he was when we worked him out. Um, he's got some savviness. He understands, and you know, he stays on his feet. Uh, works well with the right guard. I think they communicate well, and you know, it hasn't been perfect, but certainly, um, you know, he, he's he's played some, some some good football for us, and it's been consistent, and, and we. Are excited to have him back. Talked to Terrell Williams about the run defense yesterday, and he used the words, we're totally fine. Uh, didn't seem really concerned at all with the the lack of production from the defensive line in the last four games. Do you agree with that idea that this run defense is totally fine? Uh, no, I mean, I'm not going to like sit here and twist people's words. If that's what Terrell said, uh, you know, I think that there's not a panic. I get that, Jimmy. Don't worry. You know, we, we have uh, there's a lot of snaps on there that, that are that are good. And again, when you give up double digit runs, you know those add up. And then the and the X play runs. And you know, I, I appreciate your question. Nothing is fine. Like we're we're three and five, so it, it's it's never going to be uh, fine. There's always this process of you know you have to do it each and every week and. Whether you gave up 200 yards last week or you gave up 60 yards, every week is a huge challenge. We've seen that over and over um, through the course of my experience in the National Football League when it's like, man, uh, we, we should be great. They're averaging this or you know, whether it's the pass game, any, anything that statistically, you know, it just you have to go out there and prove it. So um, one week doesn't mean something's going to happen the next week. Uh, you have to be able to go out there and, and then do it consistently and not get um, lackadaisical. You know, and just not, not get uh, saying, hey, they're not going to run it because you know, we, we don't have a contract with them. We don't know what they're going to call. So you have to be able to prove yourself every week as a player and, and as, a, as a unit and as a team. Terrell, t so Terrell's saying totally fine. Shane's saying kind of it's just six or eight plays. Like, is, is there a handle on what you really are right now as a run defense and as a pass defense? Because it seems like there's this feeling that, like, you're good at both of those and you're just, this is an aberration. It, are you good at both of those and this is just an aberration, or are you not good at both of those right now? No, again, we've, we've, there's times where we've been really good. Um, you know, and, um, you know, I'm not going to sit here today, I, again, you know, we're, we're not going to tie in everybody's words, Paul. I'm not going to do that. I, I appreciate you guys' questions. Um, my, my goal is to try to get us to, to, to be more consistent and understand that every time you have a call defensively, since we're talking about defense, um, 
that there is an understanding of where, where you may be uh, light and, and what you're trying to do in, in split safety defense or the things you have to do against post safety defense where you know, they're going to try to run maybe some, some play action. You have to be able to, to, to take something away but then also know where you are a little bit shy. And uh, that, that's my goal here uh, to everybody, whether that be the, the, the coaches or the players, especially the ones that have to go out there and execute it, uh, that they know what everybody's job is and they have to be able to say, here's what I have to make up for, here's how I have to fit the run, and, uh, or here's how I have to transition, here's how I have to cover it over uh, in this particular zone. This is how I have to cover the, the bow route and cover two and not let them throw it over my head. I have to be able to take away the flat on third and two when we're, when we're clouded. Like all these little things that just show up, um, you know, that are just going through my mind here as you process the last game, using those as examples. Like you know, they run a, a running back to the flat and cover two on third and two. You know, you, you don't really think that they have a play. I've never run a roll pass into cover two. Like, we, we try to call roll pass here before on offense, and you know if you see a cloud corner, you know you probably uh, aren't, aren't going to have a successful play. So we all need to under, understand those things. So whatever anybody said or didn't say, my goal is to get everybody to understand that we have to know the call, we have to execute it, and be willing to accept you know, some of these things that happen uh, ba based on the call and say, hey, been through this. It's cover three. It's two by two. They can't beat us on four verticals. And if they run something else, because that's what I tell them. Like, if they run four verticals against cover three, shame on you. And if they go somewhere else, then, then I'll be able to at least uh, live with the process. With some of these things you're talking about, is there a disconnect in knowing the calls? Is there a disconnect? No, I mean, no, so? we just have played some guys. You know, man, we, again, we get into this part, like, whether it's Trey Avery and understanding that it's third and two or, um, you know, Rolling some guys out there and, and edge and, you know, again, you try to play physical and, you know, you look at one of their, you know, like successful runs uh, from the game the other night. Like Weaves, Weaves, you know, beating the tight end pretty good. He's beating him up and he's, and he's crashing him down in there and the back starts to go in there, you know, and then the back bounces out and, you know, we, we don't go and you know, make the tackle. So it's like, man. Like, yeah, we want to be able to do that, maybe do it a little bit sooner and clean it up for the corner. But, you know, Reeves doing with the arm right, taking it and crashing the guy into the C-gap. Warren comes in, doesn't like it, and then bounces outside. Somebody's got to go run and make a tackle. I was going to ask you about Weaver, actually. It seemed like some decent production from him last year. Were you expecting a little bit more along those lines this year or kind of what's – your email on him. I don't. I don't have, I have the same expectation for everybody that they show up uh, ready to prepare as a starter. That they play hard. That they take advantage of their opportunities uh, whenever they may come. You know, we keep adding guys. They only only activate so many guys, and uh, you know, he, he played a lot more. You know what I mean? Like, so. Is he, uh, I guess is he meeting your expectations? This yeah, year? he's working hard, and again, he's had some plays that he'd like to have back. Um, just like everybody else. So, again, he's worked hard to try to, you know, figure out a role on, on special teams or where that may be uh, for, for when he's active. So, yeah. As group of guys as, you know, whatever. Uh, and obviously, you know, we know they have some injuries in their secondary, but they still got some good players. And the backups are, are pretty good as well. So, uh, you know, we're not taking them for, taking anything uh, lightly. What, you've seen plenty of young quarterbacks play with plenty of them. What, what stood out about what the past couple of games, you know, maybe in comparison with other guys in Uh Will, compared to some of the younger quarterbacks I've been around, um, I, don't, I really can't compare him to young quarterbacks I've been around. I play with a lot, and all of them, you know, have, have strengths and weaknesses, just like uh, everybody in the league. But Will, I can speak for him himself and not compare him to anybody. Um, you know, he seems composed. Uh, he seems uh, very uh, competitive. He seems like he want to win. Uh, he takes everything, uh, everything serious, not just on the, you know, on the game field, but practice field as well. And that's what you gotta love about him. Uh, he 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 want to be that guy. He want to he want to be the one that uh you know are in those situations that we can count on. And you know, he's he's working like 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 all of us.
How do you like the way he's kind of taking command of the offense? And, you, know, you see the relationship he has with you. You say you're open even when you're covered. Uh, you know, just trying to be there for him, uh, for him to con continue to feel like that. Obviously, not just myself, other receivers as well. We got to be reliable uh, when, when he comes our way. There's going to be mistakes, growing pains. That's part of the game. But for us, we we feel like we we got to be reliable, and it's on us. You know, we don't want him to feel like the pressure's on him. Let's go out and have fun. You're saying the hit thing to him this week, guys, or is it just kind of business as usual? You know, Mike makes an announcement official. He's the guy moving forward. You give him an extra boost, or you just let him keep rolling? Well, that's business as usual. Just let him keep rolling. The guy loves football. That's all you can ask for. So, you, know, you don't want to sit there and, uh, you know, try to worry him too much and bug him. You know, he he takes everything serious. The way he approaches the game, you got to respect it. So, you know, we, you know, us as receivers, you know, we don't we don't sit there and uh, harp on him about anything. So, uh, you know, just let him do his thing. You've been in locker rooms that have gone through quarterback transitions before. Just how do you feel like this one has handled everything with Ryan as well? Uh, you know, I can only speak on my job and what I what I got to do. Uh, and honestly, let's go out and be reliable for whatever quarterback is throwing me the football, man. Uh, you know, I don't really get caught up in anything else around what I can control. What if we guys got a plus level arm like Will does? What does that do for you guys as receivers when you're going to catch the ball? I mean, because he may put it somewhere where somebody else can't. Um, just trying to be reliable, you know, obviously. It's the NFL. He, he's, a, he's a quarterback, and we're receivers. So wherever the ball is behind us, in front of us, we feel like it's on us to go get it. He has a strong arm. I think everyone see, sees that, but it's you know getting on timing, uh, and it starts at practice. Ryan was just one of the guys that helped recruit you here. You guys worked through the first part of the season. Same thing to him, or how do you like how he kind of handled himself as a, as a pro since you've been here? Uh, I got a lot of respect for Ryan. Always has, I always have, and I always will. Um, competed against him for for many years when I was in Houston, and I competed against him when I was in Arizona as well. So uh, a lot of love for Ryan and and uh, the way he approaches the game and the way he goes about every day being a professional. Three and five, a lot of season left, but is there a feeling within the locker room and the team that it's kind of now or never, and kind of kicking the pants to to get this thing into gear here? Take game by game. That's all we can do. Uh, control what we can control uh, and not look ahead. Uh, we got Tampa Bay this week, and that's what we focused on. They're not competing against the good receivers, obviously, but they've got two good ones. Do you, you watch guys from afar? What do you think about, the, about I guess, Evans and Godwin? Uh, i got a lot of respect for those two receivers over there, um, Mike Evans and Godwin. Those, those two are, are, you know, Pro Bowl receivers. And, uh, you know, someone who's been in the league as long as I have, of course, you know, I love watching receivers go out and uh, handle themselves like those two do.